Hey guys, hope you're doing fine. My name is Dutch, and I am here to introduce you to my DD4 waveguide. So as most of you know, I made one of these for DD2 and DD3. They were very popular, and uh, I still get compliments about today as to how much it helped people getting through either one of those, uh, especially for newer players that are uh, just getting into Dark Dimension 3. So uh, what I've done is I've tried to use the exact same format in DD4 as I did in DD3. Uh, you got the nodes and the wave drops here. Uh, I have the kill orders based on the highlighting of red for the character names as you go through it. You can see those are my suggestions for what you should kill first uh, on each wave. But uh, of course, you know. You don't have to do that. Your team may be different from what I use or I would think that most people would be using, and so it may not be relevant. Uh, but it's really up to you to figure this out. Uh, I just want to provide the wave drop info because I think that is the primary concern when you're going through this is how many people can I kill in this wave before the next wave drops? Because if you can plan that out, it helps you make sure that you know you got good energy or you've got your buffs ready, maybe taunts up right before you go to the next wave or another group drops in. And it makes things a lot easier if you can get that uh, planned ahead and know exactly what's coming. So this will help everybody in that regard. If you're interested, there's also some generic data on each uh, node, such as you know what the restrictions are, how much health all the enemies have combined, how many enemies there are, uh, how many may remain if you're using the uh, check function. Uh, my personal thoughts on the difficulty of the uh, node, th but that's going to wild or wildly vary based on your team composition and how good they are and how many red stars you have on them and all that. So um, that's that's just a very general rating. And then the average health of each character in the node. So for this one, it's say 10.8 million. There's 15 enemies, so that comes out to about 726k health per enemy. But that's of course not all of their health is just trying to show the average because as you go through some of these nodes you'll notice that the third nodes are much much higher like this one for instance the non-restricted nodes the first one it's 726k per enemy on average right the next one's 1.1 million and then the next one is almost 1.3 million so it's a pretty big jump <laughs> almost twice as much health on that third node as it is on the first um, so it's just something to be aware of and that also kind of plays into the difficulty of each node so there are some interesting uh, changes to DD4. Uh, the first thing is, is that on certain drops, there will be characters that only use their special, only use their ultimate, or only use both their special and ultimate. Um, there are also some that just don't have a passive for healing purposes, uh, which is a great change, by the way, to DD4. There are a lot of characters that could sustain themselves for quite a long time uh, <laughs> if they were allowed to do so. And I think that the devs realized that the Node 7 and DD3, where the two Iron Fists were constantly healing each other, was not fun for a lot of people. Same with the Miss Marvels, if they stacked up in Node 3 of DD3, uh, you could get stuck, literally just stuck with a bad team and not be able to get through ever. Uh, without bringing a whole bunch more characters up and then being way behind on getting other characters you need for later notes. So they uh, they changed that significantly. In DD4, you can basically plow your way through for the most part with suboptimal teams. It'll just take a lot of attacks, and I'll talk about that later because I've done some analysis on that. But the idea is just to show here, you know, these, these badges here, um, the legends up here is uh, special alt and special plus alt. That's what they stand for. When they're next to the character's name, that's the indicator that that character on that wave is going to perform that uh, ability every single time. Whenever it says special and alt, it's actually special, then alt, then special, then alt, then special, then alt. It just keeps going back and forth. So they will start with the special. However, if they use the special the first time you attack, they don't get around to a second turn to alt. The next time you come back into the node and attack, they will be on the alt. So it is going back and forth between those two, and it does remember that. So I have seen that in, in my run of Dark Dimension 4 so far. Uh, a couple other things, if you want to link to the guide, it's also up here at the top. It's uh, tiny.cc slash dd4 dd4. This guide is a part of my larger spreadsheet collection of things that I've done and worked on and uh, made for calculators, milestones, and even my dd3 guide is in here, at least the node drops and all that. Um, so I'm going to be continuing at, to add to this spreadsheet book and just put whatever I work on in here. Um, since the DD stuff is the most important, I put that up to the front, but there's a whole bunch of old stuff that I've done in here as well. 
Um, this is a work in progress still. I'm not done with it. I've gotten a lot of the information. There have been a lot of people in the community that have helped by sending me videos or screenshots or uh, telling me, you know, if I made a mistake on the guide somewhere. And I uh, appreciate all the feedback. Uh, you guys are welcome to, you know, hit me up on Discord and let me know uh, if I messed something up or if you have a better idea of how to attack a node. Uh, I'm always open to discussing strategy and, and thought process between uh, going through these things and seeing what's the best best course of action. Another thing I've added that's kind of a neat feature, if you do make a copy of this sheet, and I do recommend that people do that eventually when they're going through it, um, you can always dispose of it and recopy it later after I've made updates to it, uh, which I do periodically. Um, one thing that you can do is if you want to just do see the wave information and the general node information, you can hit this button over here. It says disable spoilers and tips. Um, it'll black out all of the boxes down here that provide the strategy and a sort of the way to beat the node uh, that I found or found successful or other people have found successful via their videos and stuff. Um, it's just a way of if you want to just look at the waves and figure it out for yourself because you enjoy the puzzles and you enjoy completing it on your own. Absolutely go ahead and do that. Um, somebody had asked about this on the previous DD3 guide, and I never really found a good way to do it. And I thought of this, and I, I put it together, and uh, basically, if you check that box, all these boxes get blacked out so that you don't have to worry about seeing all that information. And um, it'll hide hide that information for you so that you don't have to accidentally look at it. Um, but it helps a bit. So. In any case, if you want to use that, you're welcome to. The other cool feature, and this is the same thing I did in DD3, uh, as you're going through the nodes, especially the longer ones that you're not going to one-shot, um, if you check the boxes here, it'll highlight the, the character's background in black. And what you'll see here is the enemies remaining will tick down based on the number of check boxes that you have for that node. So once you've completed a wave, you know, you'll see that. You're down to nine, now you're on the wave two. Um, if you made your own copy of this sheet, you can do that as well, and that'll help you figure out where you are in progress of a node. So when you come back in after a few attacks, you, you know. Um, so as you kill characters, you want to check those boxes and uh, just make sure that you keep it up to date. And it also helps with seeing, you know, enemies remain, um, you know, if it's at 10, and I know the next wave drops at 9, well, then this one will drop here after I kill the next person, which is an invisible woman, and the next wave should drop in. After I kill, say, Vulture and Falcon, then the next wave should drop in because it's at seven left, right? So all, the top row here is all about what's the enemies remaining currently in that node. These aren't always 100% accurate. Um, sometimes we've seen a lot of glitchy things where it's you know generally most people see the next wave drop at nine uh but maybe you know somebody sees it at 10 for some reason uh there are variances for longer nodes is what we've seen it generally um but it, it's really hard to predict and and figuring out the exact circumstances as to why that happens for some and not others is very difficult um so i've put in here as best as i've seen uh as, as far as the numbers go especially what i've experienced and um in going through dd4 myself and i'm just trying to share it with the community and uh, make sure that everybody's aware of how it works and what's coming so with that said, uh, right now I am in DD4, but I am stuck uh, waiting for gear to go to Cosmic. Uh, I'm sure many people are. <laughs> I know last time I checked, there was you know about a thousand people waiting to get into Cosmic, and um, it's it's pretty pretty rough as far as gear goes. So you know when you're going through this, you can see all these different uh, characters and what's what's coming as far as each grouping goes. However, if you want to see a bit more high-level information on what other people have done, if you click down here, there's actually another sheet that I made, and this is the comparison that, I, that I've done for tracking other people's progress and what teams they're using. Now, I've used a very shorthand version of the character name, so it may be a little bit difficult to read, um, but for the most part, you can kind of figure out who the characters are based on the traits and, and uh, what they're doing. And just to give you a quick review of this information. I've had a few updates to it. Uh, I can tell you that everybody um, has been doing pretty well in global. There's a very few people that haven't done well in global. And so it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference who you bring, as long as you bring Sinister or Emma, it seems. Um, for the most part, you're going to get through either way with either one of them. However, Sinister is slightly cheaper in mini uniques by one piece of gear. 
so it may be better to take him. As far as Cosmic goes, uh, still, I think the best Cosmic runs have been Thanos, Phoenix, Hela, Minerva, or the Hela, Minerva, Longshot, Shatterstar combo. Um, those, those seem to be the best ones. However, I wanted to point out one that just kind of popped up, and so I wanted to add it here. Uh, a guy named He Hate Me brought Thanos, uh, Proxima, Cull, and Longshot, and was able to do it in 5, 6, and 8, which isn't too bad. I mean, that's 19 attacks. Um, you know, that's that's pretty good. That's still better than uh, some of these other ones that spent that many attacks on just the third, third Cosmic node. Um, may not be the most optimal, but it's an interesting grouping. And it's something different, so it offers you an alternative that's not too terrible like some of these other ones over here that took, you know, 71 or 50 or... 94 attacks to get through Cosmic. So, <laughs> so I'll update this as I see more info. Uh, this all came from the Tahiti Discord, which is another Alliance cluster. Uh, a lot of nice guys over there and a, a good place to hang out and get some more DD information. Uh, they have a couple channels dedicated to DD4 if you want to go chat there. Uh, it's definitely very useful information, and I, I've gotten a lot of benefit from it seeing what other people have posted as far as their progress goes, and that's where the sheet came from, was uh, putting together a lot of that information and trying to figure out you know, exactly where the gaps were in some of these teams. The other thing I'll point out is in city nodes, uh, everybody's having a tough time with that third city node. I think the best um, attack so far has been Glum. He did it with SSM, Symbiote, Spider-Man, Anti-Venom, Scream, and Punisher, and he did 11 attacks, whereas most everybody else spent uh, 16 plus on it. And um, that's everybody took Sym Symbiote Spider-Man. Uh, there's a little bit of variance there. Some people did did or did not take Scream, and some people took Carnage instead of Anti-Venom, and um, and then some people took you know Vulture or Merc LT or Punisher. But they all they all tend to take about the same regardless. So it's probably just going to come down to your roster and what's best for that. As far as Legendary, I don't have a whole lot to update here. Um, there really hasn't been a whole lot changed, but most everybody is taking Maw, Phoenix, and Doc Ock. The only slight variance is that one person did take Fury instead of Invisible Woman, and um, he did just fine. He did just as well as anyone else did with, with Invisible Woman, so if you happen to have the gear or maybe a 7 Red Fury may be more enticing to take the G15 than an Invisible Woman, you know, have at it. It's, it's going to come down to your roster and your gear and what's accessible to you more than anything else. But uh, for the most part, you know, a lot of people are, are you know, getting through this as soon as they get into the next group of, of nodes, it really just comes down to the gear. And so another thing I want to point out here, uh, I've grabbed the DD4 rewards for uh, a couple of people. So uh, Rain Pro was nice enough to share his run with me, and that's the first run rewards. Um, he got, you know, the you get the 300k gold, 200 tier fours, and an elite five, um, and then the Doctor Doom stuff. Those are all standard, uh, whether it's first or second run. Um, those don't really change. Then uh, you get the superior uniques. There's a couple there at 18 apiece, which I mean, I don't know why it's 18 and not 25 because 25 is what you need to go from you know, 14 to 15, but, you know, whatever. Then you get a whole bunch of uh, completed gear, and you get 4,500 SBCs after your first run. So keep that in mind, because a lot of characters take about six to uh, 600 to 1,000 SBCs in order to go from just Tier 14 to Tier 15. So that really means that if you're counting on this gear to level up a bunch of characters, you're probably not going to be able to get more than 5 max out of the... Um, DD4 first run rewards. The other thing to consider is that a lot of this is static drop. So if you see here, it's 110 pieces of each of the class type gears, and then um, the main ones at least, and then the 55 and 35 for the second and third tier uh, class gears for each of the origin types. The other cool thing is that all the mini uniques for G15 drop at 70 a piece for your first run. Um, that's really important because in DD3, this was completely random. And sometimes you get a whole bunch of like, you get like 120 of each of the mutant gear and you'd only get like zero or 15 of like the bio gear to get those symbiotes up. And it was just like, ah, you know, it's an RNG factor that was there for DD3 rewards. That's gone for the most part in DD4. Um, the only part that's really RNG is the completed pieces that drop. Uh, the superior pieces apparently are, are random too, from what I've heard, although I haven't confirmed that. And then the catalyst drops. So you can see here he got 
you know, 1050 of the focus and uh, resistance catalyst, and you got 600 health and damage, and only 300 of the defense uh, catalyst, which is actually a really pretty good spread, right? Um, so getting only 300 of the defense ones is great because those are the most useless of them, and uh, that's important to know. But if you're only getting 70 of each of the mini uniques, I mean, you got to think that's, you know, that's basically one character's, you know, at, at four pieces is uniques, right? Because they need 70 to 72 for a four-piece G15 character. So don't plan on upgrading, you know, half your roster because you completed TD4 because you're not going to get there. Even with the time rewards right so if we look at those you know you're getting 90 of each mini unique which is great because that's a five piece character and you can upgrade them completely with that and you get um let's see 7500 sbcs that time so it's it's a bit more um so that'll help with the upgrades but uh still it's a little a little light honestly for how much we have to to use to get through dd4 i mean i think it's a total like 14,000 sbcs for my entire 16 man roster to get through dd4 so um you know it's it's expensive <laughs> it costs a lot of a lot of spcs it costs a lot of gear it's a lot of time and effort to get all this stuff and farm it and put it together um but just fyi at least you don't have rng in some of these rewards uh like we did last time so you hopefully won't get screwed out of you know getting a couple of characters that you really want to uh g15 so uh, I just want to point that out. Um, the guide is here. It's in my uh, general sheets and it's under the DD4 nodes name. Um, oh, I think it's, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was at the uh, top. But anyway, so it's right here. Just go ahead and make a copy, however you like. Uh, put it on your drive and uh, play around with it. Uh, you may want to, you know, make a new copy of it in a few weeks or something after I've updated some things. Like I said, it's a, still a work in progress. I don't have 100% of the wave drop info, and I don't have a, a, any of the strategies built beyond node 7 or so. Um, the reason why? I'm only through node 6, so I don't really like writing the strategy guides based on other people's gameplay. I like to do it on my own. Uh, it's just going to take a while because, like I said, I'm, I'm hurting for gear. I'm not going to get through Cosmic here for a little bit because i got to get more mini uniques. Um, but it's it's eventually going to get there. So uh, you can check it and see. Um, there may not be any changes when you get to Cosmic because I won't have been there myself. But, you know, I'll, I'll write it when I get through it, and uh, I'll update it as I, as I go. So if you have any questions or any issues with it, please let me know. Uh, the link is going to be in the description, so let me know if you have any issues with that either. Um, I'll be posting this on Reddit just so people have access to it. And uh, yeah, this should cover everything that you need as far as just general knowledge of DD4. And uh, hopefully it works out for everybody and you get through there and you get your Dr. Dooms. Uh, I can't wait to get mine because I want to use him in Arena and stuff. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I can't wait to try him and, and play around with him and uh, see what teams I can find to use with him. But of course, that's a, uh, a few months away. <laughs> so uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you later.